G'day folks. Now for tonight's little, uh, well, equipment examination come possible autopsy. Uh, I've got a pneumatic pump. Uh, this was just a $5 special at the junkyard, along with some license plates to send to some of my overseas friends if necessary. Um, I know a few people who I'll be including some with. Not that our license plates are anywhere near as good as American ones. <laughs> But yeah, I grabbed some of them and one of these. So <coughs> tonight we're going to have a good look at it and uh, see if it's fixable. Apparently it's not cycling. It says no no beat on it, so I'm guessing it's not cycling. Uh, could very well be a stuck valve. Looks like someone smacked the top of that with a hammer. Um, yeah, it's covered in paint splatter, so I'm guessing it was a thinner's pump or something. See, inside these manifolds is spotless. Definitely wasn't conveying paint. I'd say it's probably the solvent to go with it. Because that looks like uh, either it's just the pigment for paint, like a mixing station or something, or um, it's for a professional spray painting company. Because apparently this guy brings in lots of old racks and things which are just caked thick with paint. So this guy must be a professional coater or something like that. But it's a Chinese made pump. Um, max pressure is 0.7 megapascals, so it's about 100 psi. My compressor sits about 90 at the moment, so it's safe to run full pressure. Uh, yeah, and that would be the air inlet, and that would be the outlet, like muffler or something, that would just go off somewhere else, keep it quiet. Uh, that's all I'm concerned about at the moment. And uh, the inlet and outlet are here, so... One side will be inlet valves, one side will be outlet. Won't be hard to figure out. Probably even marked somewhere on here, assuming it's not covered in paint. I'd be willing to guess that it's down. Inlet will be at the top for gravity priming, and then outlet will be at the bottom. So anyway, I'll uh, give this a bit of an examination, and I think first we'll just apply some air pressure to it and see what it does. I had a feeling this would be something sticky. I'm guessing all the jostling around at the junkyard kind of fixed it because this thing works. You can even see it thrusting back and forth a little bit as the piston moves. It's very loud without the silencer on it. But I think this camera's going to do it justice. Let's see if we can get some uh, light in there. And... Yeah, you can see a piston in there. It's a bit scored, looks like it probably used some lubrication, but turn them on low. It's working. That's the suction side, that's the discharge side. Yeah, and there goes half my air pressure. <laughs> it's a hungry little beast. But it works. And this pin pops up as soon as it starts, and it looks like it's had paint and stuff getting down past it, so... I'm wondering if that's related to it. Yeah, it's part of the valving. The valving seems to be working. I'm just going to blast a bit of inox and stuff in there and lube up this mechanism and it should be fine. If I take it apart I'm going to end up breaking the seals and things. And see there's a rubber diaphragm with a Teflon skin. So whatever's exposed to the chemical that went through this, which has a slight smell of thinners, I'm guessing it was a thinner's pump or something, a solvent pump. Uh, whatever chemical would d destroy the rubber thing, so these diaphragms have a Teflon skin on them. And if I start breaking gaskets and things, this thing's going to leak. But it's essentially got two diaphragms, and this piston pump just moves back and forth under pressure differential. They're really simple. I've seen how these things work before, and you probably see different examples in the field if you work in various industries, particularly where you're pumping combustible products. Uh, where you don't want any kind of flame or fire nearby, like 
sparks from a motor, even an induction motor, where there's a risk of a, a field winding or something arcing over, you've got to have full stainless steel explosion proof motors. All of the conduits have to be armoured, explosion proof, like gasketed. All the enclosures need special um, flame proof, expl explosion proof enclosures. Uh, yeah, petrochemicals, paints, that sort of stuff. That's why you see a lot of this sort of stuff is air operated rather than electric. Compressed air is much safer, even in the mines. Uh, a lot of the lamps are air powered. I had a couple of air turbo lamps for a while. Uh, I still do have them, but they're technically not mine, so I want to return them so they can be sold. I can't be bothered selling them. Not for the amount of money they want for them, but air powered stuff's pretty cool. Uh, if I could talk them into keeping, me keeping the lamps, that'd be good, but they're, uh, they're asking like $300 for the pair and the bearings in them are shot. I'd much rather play around with more practical stuff. They need, more too, they need too many cubic feet per minute for me to even be able to power. Uh, that's working. Should put a silencer or something on it and give it another run. And I'll see what I've got floating around the shop. Yeah, it's a shame the camera wasn't running. <laughs> Word of advice, turn the valve off before you plug it in. Unless you want to scare the shit out of yourself. Because that just started up at full noise as soon as I plugged it in. Oh well, I can't find a silencer for it. I'll probably have to make one. Doesn't matter. Works well as it is, even though it's like 8 o'clock at night. A bit of exhaust coming out of it, a bit of oil too. I gave it a bit of inox down through the valve body, so that seems to work better. Not half bad. <laughs> I'll have to find a use for this, or at least just get it running with some fluid going through it and make sure that part of it works. Being alloy, I'm guessing it'd be safe to run a uh, like a coolant mix or something through it. I'll just make up a weak weak mix of uh, normal antifreeze radiator coolant. Yeah, now I put oil through it. It's getting rid of some of the gunk that's actually in the pump. I think that was half the problem. It was just sticking or seizing. Anyway, that's about all for now. And thanks for watching.